the power and potential of immersive experiences. That's the name that brought you all here. But at AA Labs, we like to call it the future is fidgetal. So the future is fidgetal. What does that mean? Well, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier today. It's like fidgetal, what we have done is we've combined physical and digital. And what fidgetal is, we've even done trademarks, digital world and digital verse. It's the best of physical experiences made accessible in the digital world. And we like to say it's always on. It means you can always explore, have your community and interact on the platform. And interactive is super important. The engagement and making it fun. People enjoy it. And you know, you just learned a new word, fidgetal. There will be a test at the end to make sure you know how to pronounce it and spell it. But you know what, before we start digging into all that, maybe we should talk about how the heck we got here because typically people see us and don't expect us to be the tech women. So we're going to tell you why we are here. I have the honor of introducing my fabulous boss, CEO and founder, as you heard of AA Labs. Um, Amber is an experiential guru. What does that mean? Amber has been creating um, immersive experiences initially in the physical realm and then transferring that knowledge and insight into the digital realm. She is a futurist. Amber is always thinking about what's to come, where are we going? And she is an avid gamer. So you hear her, you'll hear her talk occasionally about her playing her favorite games, and that's why. All the way to my arcade room that's in my <laughs> that's house. Right. I'm definitely the gamer world. And Russell Aarons, our chief commercial officer. We've known each other for years. Super excited that she's here at AA Lab. She is a marketing guru from companies such as Mattel, uh, EA Games, Warner Brothers, where I got to work with you, yeah. uh, and Machinima, a uh, potentialist. Potentialist is, <laughs> I believe in the potential of people and what people can do when given tools. That and a Casey Chiefs fan. Now, I really do not want anyone in this to hold that against me. I know we have an Austin, Texas contingent, but go Chiefs. Um, what you're hearing is what kind of got us here. And, and I'm going to go even a little deeper because Amber believes we are all a combination of creative and analytical. It's not either or with her. And yeah. Tell me why you say that. You say it to the team all the time. Yeah, I'm super passionate about the fact that we are not one or the other. There's not a piece of us that is just technologists that don't have the creative storytelling in us. Or as an artist, um, it warms and makes technology uh, or storytelling and such makes it more warm and, and adaptable. I like to say everything has a Fibonacci background that is beautiful. And um, that's what I love. And I'm always trying to spread the, the message of that. And Russell believes in the power of fandom. I do. And, and the power of fandom is when you can tap into the passion that people have and give them new ways to experience it and live it. So you see, I am a Chiefs fan. That was my, my official Chiefs uh, face mask, which I wore for many months. But I also am a huge fan of Comic-Con. My yeah. husband is a roboticist, so I'm a big fan of robots. Um, and when I'm given experiences that let me go you know, down that rabbit hole of things I'm really into, it's great. And so you take kind of yeah. Amber's and my beliefs and skill sets, and, and that's what's, I think, exciting about what we're doing uh, at AA Labs and, and why the idea of immersive experience is very powerful personally to both of us. Right, and I, I see that all the time in our team as well. It's like, as if we are fanatics about different things in the rabbit holes, uh, this is where a lot of other people are as well, and we can relate. And then there's one other person. And what does Narendra Modi believe? Well, he says, this century is going to be linked to the virtual world. And if I could get question answers in the chat, I'd say, who is Narendra Modi? Well, this uh, esteemed gentleman is the prime minister of India. And the reason I think this is a very powerful quote is India, is a massive country. And here the prime minister is talking about that virtual is really going to be leading the century. So it's not just us believing it, it's world leaders who are talking about where we're going. And that takes us to what we think is happening now. Yeah, the future is definitely now. And one thing we always say about that is we're making the futuristic feel realistic. Yeah. Bringing yeah. it to today's uh, world. Well, and I think there's some key drivers. I mean, you brought this up a few times today, but there's some key drivers in why right now is the right time. Technology advancement. Uh, we'll talk about Generation G mm. and BC and 80. All right, let's dig in. All right. So first, 
technology advancements. There are so many processing performance, rendering, ray tracing, AI algorithms, display resolution, AR, VR, memory. <gasps> <sighs> So there's a lot. We work with a lot of partners and they uh, do things that we think are really cutting edge and interesting. And we thought this was a wonderful forum to share some of these with you um, to kind of share the wealth of knowledge that's going on out there. So first one we want to talk about is a company called Freeverse, who is out of Barcelona. And I don't have a list. Barcelona, Spain. Yeah. You know what I love about Freeverse? I always say, um, the water rises, right? And as we build these metaverses, these digital worlds, these interactive experiences, it's very important understanding the companies that are out there that are building around those that are the same premise and the same fundamentals. Let me give a primer. Yeah. Um, I assume everyone who's in this meeting knows about NFTs. You've been living under a rock if you didn't. So, you know, every day there's something about the Beeple, you know, art project or Rob Gronkowski, the football player. Um, so NFTs, though, let's just make sure we're all on the same page, non-fungible token. It is a digital item that has a blockchain attached to it that gives it value. And this is what's being done very commonly right now, um, at least in the leading edge world of technology. What was really interesting about Freeverse is they've come up with the concept of the living NFT. Yeah, and what I love about this is one of the things as we do these NFTs is as you are building these platforms, how is it being able to be portable? Because right now they're a stamp collection. Mm. You have them in one space. So we've got to, yeah, right. And so you've got to think of how do we, what is the standardization that's going to be across the board? And when we're having these conversations, what I love is as they talk about the NFTs that evolve over time. And I know you get excited by that. I do, character. I do. I mean, here's an example. If you see on our, our uh, slide here, um, hopefully everybody also knows who Lionel Messi is. He's probably the world's most popular uh, soccer player. Um, this is uh, an example of, let's say you get your Lionel Messi. And again, they're using uh, what looks like a trading card because it's a very common you know, identifier in, right. in sports. But you get your Lionel card and it has a certain value. Let's say right now, if I bought this as an NFT, I could go and sell it for $100. Um, but let's say he plays a few games scores many goals, the value of the card would literally, the, the card would visually change and the value would change. So if I was smart enough to hold on to my messy card, it could now be worth $400. If I choose to hang on to it and then he wins the World Cup, the value has gone up and it's all dependent by the market. Much like, again, a trading card, now it could be worth thousands of dollars. But we were really intrigued about this idea of, of a, an NFT living and growing, and we're looking at different ways that we will use them in our digital worlds. Yeah, and, and understanding even like our identities. I mean, you even think of, we were laughing because even our, our Wi-Fi passcodes and stuff yes. are like yours with, the, with your dog, mine with my gamer tag. And how things tie in in that way is our identity. And how are we creating things that will be portable, that will transfer to different worlds as the internet 4.0 is the immersive web. And another one I love is VPO. Mm -hmm. What I love about this partner in technology is they're a content optimization tool for the NFL. So I can actually watch my videos. And then if I say, I really like that jersey and click on that, it'll define and give me information uh, it, of the image. It does player data, link, and I can buy it and shop on it. So wait a minute, you're saying if I'm watching a KC Chiefs game and I touch on Patrick Mahomes, I could like read all about him and get a, a package from Mahomes number 15 jersey. That's a pro player for esports. <laughs> we come from such different <laughs> worlds. I love it. So um, we are partnering with, uh, with VPO on some really interesting, um, what we call sports experiences, but we love what they're doing, which is taking entertainment and making it both in, uh, informative and with an e-commerce uh, element to it that's completely seamless. Right, and I love you, you still get to watch the videos. That's yeah, the part right. that's it doesn't the best. Make you I'm out not of stopping the experience. it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Really cool. So um, we talked about technology advancements. Let's go to our next key driver, Generation G. Okay, we've all heard Gen Z, Gen Y, Gen X, what does it mean? Well, this is a new one for you. And I did some research on this. The Atari 2600, which was the first home gaming system. So remember, we all used to in the 70s and you know early 80s, everyone was playing in arcades. Well, this was the first home console system and it was really transformational and allowing people to play games, video games at home. 
launched in 72. So let's just say we give it a few years to get immersed into people's houses. What that implies is that everyone after 1981 is a gamer, that in some way, shape or form, they were exposed to and playing games. And this is massive because what we have is 40 years, four decades of people who have been in immersive worlds, whether it's Mario Brothers or Call of Duty or Fortnite. And we've never really had that before. It's, it's, it's even more powerful than people growing up as the TV generation, because these are people who have a, a, a very different sense of, of how you participate in reality. Yeah, and it's interesting because even our books were that way, right? Like the choose your own adventure. Mm. Like since we were a little kid, we could choose which adventure paths we wanted to go through on our books. Same as our games. We get to create stories and tell it. So this whole being spoon fed of content or being spoon fed doesn't work. That's why you need that interactivity and that engagement and let us be clear. Yeah, people wanting the power of choice and decision. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you're a Generation G, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. So that's Generation G. And just in case you're wondering, it does encompass uh, X, Y, Z. And I think today is Generation Alpha. So 40 years of, of people who are gamers. And then the last one that we're going to bring on here is a, uh, B, C, and A, D. I know it sounds a bit biblical, it's not. It stands for before COVID and after disruption. Why is this important? Because before COVID, if we had said, hey, we're gonna have a meeting and everyone joined virtually, you would have said, what are you talking virtually? How, how does that work? After disruption, and, and that's really where we're going now, we have seen the greatest, I believe, someone can correct me on this, the greatest, a uh, mass adoption of a, a new technology than I think the cell phone. And that is that from grade schoolers to grandparents, we are all now comfortable creating a virtual connection, talking to people in a way that we used to think was just, again, something in, in a sci-fi movie. And so when you have this mass adoption of technology combined with our 40 years of gamers, you have just teed us up to really have a virtual immersive experience. And I think that this moment in time, and, and earlier uh, before we began our presentation, Jay was asking us, well, you know, how do you think about things post COVID? And we say, it's wonderful because we're not saying we should all, you know, stay in our houses and, and never go out and enjoy, you know, the sun air or, or you know, meeting in person. But we see more than ever that people find this type of technology a, a part of their lives. And um, we have research that proves it. So this is from Accenture. Thank you, Accenture. And I found this really interesting. 47% of consumers said immersive technologies make them feel more connected to brands. Now think about that. People are fickle these days, and especially our younger generations, right? Younger generations want to know, what have you done for me lately? So if immersive te technologies make them feel more connected, what happens to the next layer of all Well, this? and I'll, I'll say, I, I strongly don't believe that our generation is, what are you doing for us lately? It's more of what are you teaching us lately? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I, I take it on like, well, why would I, you have my brand loyalty just because my parents liked it? Brand loyalty comes from learning, giving us something that makes our life better. Having those different pieces are one of the biggest reasons why you become loyal to a brand. Yeah, yeah. So here's the next big fact that stunned okay. us both. Yeah, and I love that. I mean, 61% of consumers say they'd be more likely to buy a brand that uses immersive technology. And I think that's super important because what is the immersive technology doing? I mean, even look at esports, right? The technology allows as you're watching esports to learn. And, and become a better player. And, and be entertained. Yep. And, and so I think what's interesting about this research is, you know, in the 90s, um, companies started doing websites, right? It was a big <laughs> deal to have a website and you were, you know, marketing that you wanted to, you know, come and visit us. Then we moved into the era of social media, right? And everybody first had to have a Facebook and then it became, you know, LinkedIn. And now you have to be on Clubhouse, what we see is the next evolution of this is immersive technology. So that's going to become the must have for brands. Not that you don't want the other things as well, but it's a new additive layer to do what Amber just said, which is bring people deeper in, educate, 
inform, inspire. So that's uh, why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And there's other players in the space. Um, we are not the only people doing this. And that's great because, you know, again, the more we can have people um, understanding what it means yeah. to be in a virtual space. Uh, so, and everyone has a different take on it. I think what we're excited about, our point of difference is that we're truly creating these 3D experiences. So it's not just looking at something from a flat experience. It's literally as if you're going in, but no, no glasses, no VR, yeah. no, you know, it's very accessible. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest things is I, I always say water rises, right? So let us all create these different worlds that communicate or, or be able to be portable back and forth. But quick to market doesn't solve problems. And sometimes everyone will rush to the market and they'll be like, okay, let's do this. Let's peel this. Um, feel like a, a bridge or make a band-aid for something. And what happens is products are created that are not adaptable. And I think this goes back to what I was saying about like the creativity and the tech and why we need both. Because mm -hmm. you can build the best technology, but if it's not, if it's scary, yeah. if it's not adaptable, yeah. it's, I always say if, if my sister in East Texas, who's got two kids and is really busy, can't quickly understand it and get to play and interact with it, then you didn't create it frictionless. And, and we have a picture there, no slight to our good friends at Google, but Google Glasses, let's just face it, it was way ahead of its time. It was, it was people were not comfortable with understanding what that was beneficial to them. And tell your story, yeah. I love your story. Well, I think one of the big ones is it, the red light. I mean, I think that's a big thing. The red light really kind of scared people because no one wants to, I mean, look, we're always being reported on one way or form through data, but having it constantly in our face, yeah. was it was scary and less warm. And I think it goes back to, um, the same thing when we helped bring HTC Vive to market five years ago, it was five and a half years ago, it was how do you get people to adapt something when they had first tried it as a VR phone? And in the phone, they were scared of it. They're, oh, that thing made me sick. You can't put that thing on my headset. You can't put that headset on my face. And it was first you had to get them out of that. Well, my granny understood Pokemon. <laughs> it was cute. It was fun. I could show it to her. Everybody had the phone and it was interactive and engaging. So, so you're saying, what I hear you saying is, Technology, not just for the sake of technology, because yeah. that's when people, which I think leads us to kind of what yeah. we're trying to do. I think it's what our philosophy, it drives innovation. We're mm -hmm. all about how are we not only creating in a space because maybe it is a newer form of technology, but does it have the factors in place that will let it be adopted? Can it be frictionless? Is it something that I can interact and engage and want to keep being a part of? And if it doesn't have those forms, then I'm not going to keep coming back. Yeah, and I think um, as the marketing person, that's why when we talk about immersive worlds, um, unless we're talking to a very sophisticated crowd like this is, we actually avoid words like metaverse and you know other realities, because that kind of, kind of scares people. What we've learned is that people are comfortable with the concept of another world. And so we are world builders. This is the AA uh, tagline. And, and world builders is what we do. And you're seeing a, a first tease image of one of our beautiful worlds. You can see it's bright, it's light. It's a place where you wanna go and hang out. Maybe all of us can have a drink there later. And what we do is we help businesses facilitate new ways to connect, inform and inspire action in their customers and, and their business partners. And engagement, my goodness, has not that been the, the watch word or the hot yeah. word of the you know, 2000s. Um, but for us, that's just the beginning. Engagement is more than just someone showing up and commenting. It's about them really being in your experience. Yeah, and I think that's one of the big things and, um, that making like what we've done with the digital world mm -hmm. is we've combined the physical world and the two can connect and communicate between digital, having that digital presence and about the content. And so having a virtual 3D web environment has been key. You know, we don't create these right now in glasses because mm -hmm. I want everybody from a Chromebook to a high powered graphic card computer to be able to play. And I always say, I want them to watch the content, create content, uh, play in the space, have fun and shop. So why can't I, it goes back to what we were talking about. Why can't I be in a space that I get to learn about something, whatever that may be from from shopping to a brand, to sports, to working out, to an influencer, to, to even your politics. How can I have it all in one space and watch the continent? And I get to create in a space and be a creator. Cause remember we've been doing that from the beginning of choosing your own adventure. Um, and then shopping. If I like something, I wanna be able to find it in the same location. 
And I think always on is super important because if you're only having something for a few days, I mean, 20 years of live events and experiences that I've done, the reason that we would have it at a shorter amount of time was because of the expense yeah. and people couldn't travel and fly into town. And we're going to see that more and more. The travel schedule, I don't know about y'all, but definitely cut back. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I actually get to know where <laughs> Mopac is and Austin. It was cool. So it's like, how do we actually create environments that let the two worlds create and talk together? Yeah. And what's been exciting for me is that looking at this combination of physical and digital and then people's content, you know, really bringing it to life. It's created lots of use cases, whether it's sales enablement, which we're going to take you into in a minute, um, fan experiences where your sister in East Texas gets to meet a celebrity or an athlete yeah. who she never would be able to, yeah. or even training in education where you can literally bring people into a virtual campus. Right. So it, it starts to kind of blow your mind about what's possible. And I, I think measuring it is super important. Like, I want to know where does someone walk around with? How did they interact? And if it's not working, be able to change it in real time. And these are the things that whether we're doing it now or we're building and scaling to, that it's important. So it's not to take the data and sell it. It is to take the data and actually create a world that people want to be a part of. And if they're engaging and being experiencing parts of it and want to know more, then we should be able to create more of those spaces. And I always laugh because people are like, oh, well, this is such a new thing, trying to figure out how the digital and the physical space are going to be connecting. And we actually helped with the beta of Twitch Play Live. Mm. And in Twitch Play Live, we had a live experience and a digital experience. And people all over the world were able to click on a lower half third of a content and change on a stream and be able to actually feel like they were a part oh, of that. It's been very empowering. We had 3.7 million people click on those buttons. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. In three days. Well, and, you know, I'd say this um, as a marketer, ROI and CPM and all, you know, you're always yeah. trying to figure out where your dollars are going. Um, and, you know, what I love about what we do is we, we can show you. We can show you, you know, how, how many people and how long they spent. This little snapshot I took uh, from a dashboard, you know, this is a low number of people because it was a short period of time. But what you see here is, you know, people were in this in the experience for 29 minutes. Uh, I think I could have never gotten anyone to spend that much time <laughs> watching any of my video game trailers or anything because, you know, it was it was this kind of flat experience. This is immersive. All right. Well, I think, uh, folks, are you ready to put on your safety belts? No, you don't need anything. You don't need a helmet. We're, we're going to go into the digital world. And um, I'll tell you what this is. This is a live world, uh, meaning it is uh, accessible. Um, this is for our favorite client, Dell. And Dell uh, has something they call the Dell Tech Tour. This used to be a, a physical event. They would take big semi trucks and drive them around the country and bring their retailers in to see the latest and greatest Dell technologies. Uh, now, in this case, uh, COVID became the disruption, as we talked about, and uh, AA Labs created this incredible virtual environment. And so we're going to take you on a tour through it. And what you're seeing, you're looking at it from above. You can see that there are three different areas, in, outside, interior, and roof. We're going to do a little tour through each of those. So right. here we go. So, yeah. All right, so we're at the front. You see on the right, we have a virtual tour guide. Where she's gonna talk to us, but we're gonna go in and start doing our own thing. I don't have patience to sit around. I'm right, right, right. And so look at what you're seeing here. Um, lots of uh, areas for messaging, um, content interactivity. And I think we're gonna jump right in and actually play a game, right? So I love the hot spot because it lets you go in front of the space right where you may want to go. A little zoom thing is in the way here. So move that down here. All right, let's play. Well, you're really good at this. So. Oh. <laughs> but the algorithm changes every time, so I can't memorize it. So Amber is playing, uh, you know, like we used to play as kids, a memory game. Now, why is this important in a business setting? Because she is literally having to memorize Dell's products while she's playing. And talk about creating recall. This is a, a, a fun, but, you know, <laughs> entertaining way. And of course, what we have, you see that time to beat that gets people's competition going uh, in some of our worlds, we'll have a leaderboard. Ah. And that basically, you know, 
compels people to pay attention to your products. Because again, uh, as a marketer, I remember that the hardest thing is to get people to remember your messaging, um, remember the key points of what yeah. you're trying to sell them. Honey, you are on I'm fire. It, I'm it, yes. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 high five. <laughs> so you can see uh, this was fun. Um, and you know, we can see as we told about our measurement tool, we could tell you, you know, how many people, how fast yeah. people were going. Um, we're going a little deeper into our first floor here. Um, some of these areas you could touch and click out directly to e-commerce if you wanted to buy. We're going to show you another area of interactivity. You see, this is a partnership that Dell has with McLaren, um, the sports you know, race car. car. And if you want to, you know, play a race game, huh? uh, it would take us out to our <laughs> game. But if we go over to our upper side here for our badges, I'm going to go up here, right, Amber. I'm play that one. So. Anyone who plays a game knows what this is. What is this, Amber? Yeah, this your... is my achievement. I need and, reward. <laughs> and you, you know, we all hear these days about gamification, and this is a classic example of it. What we've done is we've created reasons for a customer to go through the entire experience by uh, giving them badges that they can earn. We've been having a good time. You can see we've earned a number of the badges. And so when people approach an area, they'll be told, hey, you can earn this badge, play this, yeah. go through. And this is just one of the ways we, you know, uh, create complete immersion in the experience. Oh, we're going to go to the roof. Go into yeah. the roof. So the go clear into the ADD, room. you know, I got to move around quite a bit. Oh, 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 we're going to the golf game. Yeah, awesome. I love this one because this is all about Top Golf. Who doesn't love a little Top Golf? And Top Golf is one of Dell's clients, and they're using the technology to transcend golf, and they we can see how they're doing it. And again, when you start to play this game, that back, you know, what you're aiming at. Guess what? It's Dell messaging. So again, reinforcement of the messaging by you're having a fun time. You can see we're on our beautiful, I don't think it's this nice in Austin right now. I'm, no, I'm I heard sorry. it's yucky. I hear it's a little uh, not nice out there. We're gonna hotspot ourselves over to the rugged test. Um, Dell is known for their rugged <laughs> laptops. Amber is beating the hell out of it. She is bouncing it. And as you can see, we there, also have a video. Like, then a hard Here's shot. The sound of the video. It's like my own little a powerful piece. I can like while I watch, be able to bounce so. it. <laughs> And again, you're, you're mixing in so and we've crazy. gone full screen so we can watch this beautiful uh, asset that yeah. Dell has undoubtedly spent a lot of money creating while having some fun. All right, now we're gonna go back downstairs outside to the main stage. All right, here we go, main stage. All right, so what I love about this one is I'm all about live streaming and how are we keeping people constantly engaged? So what we'll do is on the signs, we'll have different signs that'll pop up. And we'll say the dates of the times. Hey, every Tuesday, we've got a live stream coming in every Thursday. So it's driving traffic back. And as you saw what I did with the McLaren, you can actually click out on stuff as well. The, I feel the shopping part's important. I'm not like shop, but, <laughs> but being able to actually click out and go to someone else's site. This is really a great aggregator of pulling together different pieces for that product and for that community. So you can actually watch it here. And what I love, can I share this uh, Yes, again, the marketer me loves this. Let's say you just saw a fabulous live stream speaker on our main stage, or you, you know, you really loved one of those laptops. We yeah. have, you know, instant virality built in by, you know, quick shares to social media. So what you just saw, um, looking at the whole thing, I think we have 71 different yeah. content and, um, and activation spots. I mean, this is far more than you could ever have in any physical experience and honestly, much more fun and, and engaging than on a website where we'd be paging through and paging through. So that's what an experience, uh, an immersive experience feels like. Um, obviously this was corporate when we do think for fan experiences, yeah. oh my gosh, we can be anywhere. We can be in Gotham city and yeah. go walking past, you know, see the bat signal and go walking somewhere. You know, the limitations are only what you can imagine. Yeah, we say we're not limited by gravity which we are in the physical world or, or the, the cost to make something circular, which is a bit more expensive. So being able to have these tie-ins and also the, the communication. Yeah. Like we don't even get into that. Right. But like being able to have the fan experience and getting to meet like an Austin SC, being able to create and get to meet some of the players. And stuff yeah, like yeah. We are talking with NFL teams about how do you, again, create uh, opportunities for fans around the world to meet their favorite players. Um, this is an example where we might have a signed NFT jersey 
again, as part of a digital takeaway. Yeah. So anyhow, we're going on and on because we, we geek it. out over this. If you want to, you know, talk to us directly, there's Amber's uh, email. Mine's a little trickier. It's R. Aaron's, my Russell Aaron's, R. Aaron's at AA labs.com. You're Russell at AA labs. Oh, oh I'm, I'm also Russell at AA labs. So um, this is what we had to share. I hope this was interesting. And we're going to go back uh, and take some Q&A, I believe. All right, thank you two very much. We've actually got a few final slides before the long Q&A period. Okay. So we wanted, that's okay, we wanna tee that up. I see there's six questions in Q&A. We've got extra time for Q&A. Uh, Amber and Russell told me in advance that they wanted to do their presentation a little shorter so that more of you could ask questions and that they could talk to you. So uh, submit questions in that Q&A channel and Jessica and I will be reviewing those and selecting them and making our notes about, you know, who deserves that South by Southwest badge. You might want to say really nice things about Jessica in the chat if you agree. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jay. The, the pandering to Jay today, this time is- uh, the I don't have any say in that. So let me- uh, I say, so I say pander away. All right. Jessica, so, you want to talk about the next Yeah, event? so uh, we have our first in-person and virtual event in over a year. Tuesday, June 1st, 6.15. Um, it will be at the Austin Central Library. There'll be a cash bar and snacks at 5.15 and doors will open at six o'clock. Um, and we'll also be doing it virtually online via Zoom. It will be wirelessly connecting everyone and everything everywhere on connectivity, featuring Dave Walter of at and Labs. And of course it will also be online via Zoom. And yep. for that, you get your own snacks and drinks, but they're free. <laughs> and uh, your pre-event chat uh, online on the Zoom session will start at six, just as it did tonight. And we will have post-event networking online via the Toucan immersive environment. Amber, uh, Russell, have you all seen Toucan? Have not. No. It's uh, a really yep. neat uh, networking really and neat. socializing kind of environment. So, created by a college student um, within a, they, they did the beta within a month. It's, it's it's really well done. It's oh, really I think amazing. I have heard of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, we also want to tell you about the upcoming events. Oops, a little typo in that first one, but we have wireless connectivity for everyone and everything everywhere uh, on June 1, mentorship and sponsorship chat on June 16th, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and DeFi on July 13th. And then there'll be an informal event, a bourbon and Bitcoin chat on July 21. So the mentorship and sponsorship chat and the bourbon and Bitcoin chat are both small and formal events. Those will typically draw, you know, 20 or 30 people and they will be in the meeting format on Zoom instead of the webinar format so that everybody is an equal participant in those. Uh, the August 3rd event will be on space, exploration, business, communications, and more. Uh, September will be on smarter cities at the intersection of people, data, and devices. And then we'll talk about clean energy, money and finance, robotics, drones, and some other things as the year goes on. And as always, we're trying to bring you new event types. You see two new event types already programmed in here, the mentorship and sponsorship chat with Joseph Kopser and Janice Omadeke and the bourbon and Bitcoin chat. We wanna thank again our annual partners for making this possible from A to W and so many wonderful organizations. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you do for the community and for Austin Forum. We also want to remind you about the Slack workspace. We have nearly a thousand people who've joined that space. Uh, you can go to austinform.org slash Slack to join it. Uh, enter your email address, check your email to confirm the invitation, maybe check your, check your junk mail folder, spam mail folder. Uh, then enter your name and click free account and you are in. And we invite you to learn, share, discuss, Twitter, Facebook, Slack, LinkedIn, Eventbrite. Please share our upcoming events with your friends and colleagues. We also want to encourage you to donate your used devices that you're not using anymore. We are fortunate. We're all on devices right now connected to Zoom. So we know all of you have at least one we know many of us have two or three or four, sometimes an extra one sitting around in a desk somewhere that we think we're gonna use and we don't. The pandemic really exposed issues such as lack of access to broadband and lack of access to devices to connect to broadband. The Austin Pathways Project collects devices, uh, reformats them and repurposes them so that 
those devices that you don't really need anymore, a family that does need them for school and, and work can get access to them. So I've donated multiple devices over the years to this wonderful group. I, I hope you will consider it as well. They will send you a 501, they are 501c3, so they will send you a tax deduction receipt. It's a lot easier than going to eBay and trying to sell it and you get a tax deduction for it and you get to feel good and you're helping people that really need devices. So we hope you'll consider that and it's really easy. Their phone number's on the slide or you can just go to uh, send email to info at austinpathways.org. They'll even come by and pick it up. So literally all you have to do is have something you don't want and be home when they come to pick it up. So we want to hear one more thing before we go into Q&A and for you to share in the chat. What was the best thing that you learned tonight? What was the most interesting thing you learned or saw? What was your favorite part of the evening? We'd love to see what you guys got out of it. Um, I know that I know that a lot of people really liked the work at Dell. Thanks, Z Creative and the websites too. What else? What did you like about this evening? Yeah, I have to show this video to Dell the next time I ask them to continue their annual sponsorship. I'm going to say, look, you guys get talked about all the time. It's worth it. It's marketing. <laughs> Well, we have NFT. other videos and, and we have other cool ways of what we're seeing out there, but we wanted to make sure that people are, are very much um, being a part of the conversation. Yeah, so if someone asks this question, we have more things to show and tell, but we'll, we'll see where we go with this. Yeah, the positive outlook, inspire, educate, inform. Yeah, brand loyalty with immersion. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I'm not checking the time. Sorry, I got crew it. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, we are going to grab a, a drink, take a super quick break, three minutes. So it's 6.59, so by 7.02, we'll be back for live Q&A. Um, I'm already seeing more questions coming in, so we're really excited about those. So we're gonna come back, so please be here for Q&A, especially, especially if you put in a question in that you think might win, could be a South by Southwest badge. And um, then we'll also be promoting people to uh, panelists so that you can ask your question via Q&A. And I will make sure that you get to see the questions too. So give us just one moment. Jay's going to walk through the back of his, uh, oh, actually he's probably not. Jay, are you gonna go get a drink? You feeling well then? No, I'm, I'm over the stomach bug. And as you said, it, it may have lasted so long because I didn't drink any whiskey. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> so we'll be back in just one moment for live Q&A. Amber and Russell, while, every, while we're taking this quick break, I saw a question that came in if that uh, Dell demo site was live and you had the URL in the screen, I assumed it was, but I didn't see if you'd authenticated beforehand. Was that site live such that anybody could go to it? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, you have to be invited by Dell, I think, to go into it. No, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's live for anyone. Sorry, I thought this was- All right. Yeah. It, you might want to paste that URL in the chat then. There might be people that want to go and play around in there. Sure. Yeah, we've got one too for Dell University. I'll do that one as well. And uh, the only thing I'll tell you is to have the best uh, experience in an immersive world, uh, please go through uh, Chrome or Firefox. Uh, Safari is not as uh, happy of an experience and um, you will uh, get into one of our experiences that way. Um, these are also uh, accessible by laptop, uh, at this point, not mobile devices. So the interaction and immersiveness isn't there. I mean, the whole point of it is the immersive. There, there we go. All right. Jessica and I have not had a chance to confer yet about- Yeah, our... sorry, we're private uh, chatting on the chat of so we questions. Will start, we will well, we were trying to look at the questions, so- and you know, if, since we were a bit speedy in our presentation, we uh, allowed more time for questions. So if we can take them all, we'll take them all. 
absolutely will. Absolutely. What we just want to make sure we don't ask the, the, the one. Um, I do want to, Michael Shear, I just want to say thank you for J Michael Shear added his, but Jessica, you know, this is the best question. Thanks, Michael. Thank you for that guide. Um, Jay, do you want to, I just messaged you in chat for confirmation. Mm -hmm. Give us one more moment. Yeah, and then I um, put two different worlds that are open to public. People can go in. Um, I wonder, oh. you want to use uh, Firefox or Chrome. Yep, and you, I'm going to re-share that because that is, it went okay. to all panelists. So now, uh, it okay. is now to all panelists and attendees. Well, I'm sorry, Evans. girl. Did you want me to be good at tech mm -hmm. everywhere? <laughs> and it, what? Just us. I feel like I just want to make sure I am Jay and Jessica have been perfect. Oh, I mean, right, we're, build, we're, we're building virtual worlds here. We're not, we're not yeah. typing. All we're right. Gonna do Zoom. All right. Jessica and I are almost done with our, our vote, our, our uh, sampling. I know. It That's is how I like to There are some really good questions. Y'all are making it tough to pick a winner for South by Southwest. Uh, uh okay I think okay i'm going to i'm going to start with jay since we're narrowing it between those two um i'm curious about this let me see if russell is on um and oh so if you and if you ask a question look at this i'm gonna give people a heads up if you ask a question i may promote you to panelists so if you don't show up though then we will just ask your question for you but <laughs> Uh, I do this every time and it amuses me. But Russell Vargo. We forget to tell people to look nice, that we're going to promote them to ask their question. I, didn't, I don't say they need to look nice. I just want them to not look scared. So Russell, you asked uh, an interesting question. Are you able to jump on for a second and get to dialogue with the panelists? Because I'm curious if there's an answer to this. Maybe. <gasps> CVEX, Julie. Julie from CVEX is here. That makes me really happy. Hey. Hey, Russell. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to be a panelist. I but, know. Uh, this is my I, favorite part is catching people off guard. You know, Russell, it's been, but, we've but been doing this for uh, uh, 15 months, 14 months, I think, of pandemic. And we have failed every month to remember to tell people that when you ask your question, we're going to promote you live. So Jay, Jay, it's framing. We have succeeded every month at capturing people, uh, surprising people. Every month, it, it's been a surprise. It's every a success. Uh, Russell, do you remember your question? Yeah, so it, it was something along the lines of, you know, how do we bring immersive technology into countries that don't have access to the internet, that don't have access to cell phones and computer technology? Is that possible? So your question, not having cell phones? We're not having uh, yeah, so, so technology for, in general? For example, I, I helped build a school in Nepal about seven years ago. And I got into immersive media right after that. And I noticed when I was there, you know, even if, even if I had VR, you know, they didn't have the computers that could have ran it. They didn't have the stable internet that could have uh, sustained the type of connection that they need. And so I guess that's just a question that kind of weighs on my mind on a personal uh, mission is like how to bring more of these technologies into countries that don't have the infrastructure that we have. Yeah, and I think it's also taking a couple of things into account. First is, instead of having a world, that, like the one of the worlds that we were giving you um, in the link, um, having it to where they click on the content and then it starts downloading. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I do love that someone says Starlink. I completely agree. It's very nerd out on Starlink and what it can do. Um, but being able to actually let them choose make it to where you don't have to have a whole entire internet package in the entire space. Um, so if it's the cloud or paying the server separately. Uh, the other thing is, I, oh, I forgot I didn't have my little mic on, sorry. Um, the other piece I think is important is how are we um, creating, one of the things I love saying is we, make, we need to always make sure it's an equalizer and an educator. And because of, I may not always know all the big fancy words, but if I can see something visually and be able to understand it, we've been able to turn a four page white paper into a 60 second animation and an augmented reality. So inside of our worlds, we'll have 3D models or we'll have QR codes that will then come alive and products will be in front of you. And I think the biggest thing is how, does, how do we create as, as creators in these immersive media spaces, how do we create things that people can understand um, visually, even if it is across different language barriers as well? Yeah. 
And I think that's also why, you know, we specifically have chosen to be at what we hope can be the lowest common denominator. So of technology, you know, of yeah. technology. So we're not requiring VR glasses. Um, you know, this mm -hmm. is a, a web enabled, you do have to have an internet connection to Amber's point though, the less you have to, you know, actually download to get into the experience if you can download as you go. We also, we didn't show this, but we also have experiences that are less intensive. Um, they still put you in a, a 3D environment, but they're oh. not necessarily as, um, I guess I'd say, you know, data rich, which can work well when you're in areas that just don't have the, the you know, high speed internet. But I mean, the world is going digital. So we have to help communities that, that can have some sort of access because that's where things are going these days. Well, and it's understanding too, like, like someone brought up on that, the Starlink, right? Or what are some of the technologies that are being adapted and does it work? Um, for what we're trying to do, what is the max of the bandwidth or, or those so that we can keep growing and building to what the technology around us is. Cool. I, I love y'all's input. And, you know, I, I think that that's, that's one thing, you know, obviously we always focus on our immediate environment, but, you know, now, now that I've seen other parts of the world, I, I always tried to imagine, you know, how do, how do we bring these technologies to, you know, someone without and, you know, and, and so that's, you know, I, I think it's really nice, like what Jay does with collecting the cell phones with the awesome forum and bringing those to, to families that need them. And so I guess that's kind of my point is to also look at how we can help one another, not, yeah. not just share cool technology. Well, I think it's incredible, commendable that you built a, a school in Nepal. And, you know, if you remember early in the presentation, I used the quote from the prime minister of India you know, mm -hmm. again, clearly that's where you're thinking about how can technology bring a huge population to what they need and, you know, educate, inform. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Th thank you, Russell. And Russell, I just want to point you to the chat too, because studio, I'm going to, Bahai, Bahia, I'm so sorry. I can't, I'm not sure how to pronounce things, um, but somebody was giving you, checking out their model. Um, they, they do uh, different things with VR too. Thank you so much for being here, Russell. I'm going to let yeah. you become an attendee. Thank you. Um, and then Jay, you said you wanted to bring up Ron Bloom. Mr. Ron Bloom. Ron Bloom, get ready. Uh oh, this is the ringer. No, this is not the final question. It's a great. Not, no, we have a few. Yeah, we have. We have. We have a few. We're going to take a. We're going to take a little while. There are a lot of good questions. Ron. Peace. Hey, Ron. Thanks for joining, Ron. Um, I'm a. I'm. I'm a big fan of you know immersive for business and i was wanted to ask because i learned some things today is you know, when you have a large company i remember go back to my early internet days we had a great deal of trouble getting the largest businesses to understand the internet was even viable for them now they can't live without it so i have two questions really what do you what do you do to help a large enterprise find its way into the immersive world and then the other one is that we seem to, to seem a lot see a lot of companies that are building technologies for what they call like digital events. And is that where you think immersive is going or do you think that a company should have a world that stays open 24 seven? Thanks Ron, those are great questions. I think we'll take them both. Um, you know, it's interesting. We are talking with companies that are in industries that you may not think would have anything to do with immersive worlds like construction, manufacturing. And why is that? Because Everybody has a competition. Everybody needs to showcase their products and services in an innovative way. And so we're talking to companies and partnering with ones who are, might be kind of considered old school industries, but who want to showcase their products and services in an immersive environment. And so what we do is we really understand what are they trying to achieve? Is it the Dell Technologies tech tour that we went our walk through? where it was to allow retailers anywhere to come and experience Dell and, and learn a lot of information? Is it more that you want people to actually kind of have almost a physical sense of what your product can do on a construction work site? Um, so we, you know, we start with what, what's the end goal and, and how can we create an immersive experience that will take whoever your desired audience is and bring them into it? Is yeah. that what you're well, answering? And even on that one to, to build off, we did one for SAFE. I'm on the board of uh, Batter Women and Children, an amazing organization here in Austin. And um, they were able to do one in our template world, the are mentioning, and be able to share an entire uh, venue and environment virtually 
that could do like the interactions, the their galas, site charities, um, auctions, but also really show the videos and show what all of the um, world safe does and how they help and the resources there. Another, um, I think too, Ron, is um, sometimes a client will come to us with so much information. Like I have to, but they're handing us pages of medical information. Yeah, help us to communicate this. Well, our solution was, well, instead of telling, let's show, let's make something immersive. Yeah. So one of the things I love the most was uh, a medical company who had a whole information about eye disease and the ways yeah. they were treating them. We created a virtual eyeball that not only showed it, but then told the patient stories and 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 the and how what the client had built was you know helping people around the world and it was both informational and honestly a bit you know inspirational. So, so well, do you I'm, think do you yes. think that do you think that companies should really think of immersive as that way as just for events and moments or do you think that the immersive world is really going to be like the internet became a 24 seven place for businesses. Yeah. And they all started with a little toe in the water. Do you think immersive is going to be that powerful? A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's what, what um, kind of just briefly touched on, but in the deck when we were talking about having as a world, but being able to port to other worlds. So we'll have it right now where you're in a space always on. And that way your community knows how they can come back. Like we're a community here. Right. And so being able to share information as we're like, sharing companies, just like we are in the chat, how do we actually get to do that in a space that um, you can actually start exploring? And so another piece that I mentioned was like the NFTs. One of the things we're really looking at is how can we standardize the back end so that your identity can actually jump around? So one minute you may be inside of the Alienware world, the next minute you may be in AMD, which we've done, and then you wanna go and look over at Nike. And so are there ways that you actually will to each other and since they're always on you can drive audience and what we found is when someone we, we don't do anything for less than a month so we don't really think of them as digital events we think of it as creating a a, a digital presence yeah. and most of our clients find that they're getting so much use we do it for a year or two years because once you have this presence that you can then update with new content new products new marketing messaging it's, it's, it's as if you now have another headquarters in the digital realm that you can yeah. use to bring people to. Good. I mean, I think that, I think, awesome. I think that's, what's really going to make immersive. The real deal is when businesses realize that it's permanent and not, yeah. a trend. not a and I think that's, yeah. And, and I think that actually getting out of COVID is going to make that be better because there will be no excuse to do it. You'll do it because you want to do it. And um, then the world can really see that immersive, like, like we learned in early internet, immersive will be its own extension of the real world. So congratulations on what you guys are doing. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ron, for being here, for asking such good questions. Okay, I'm gonna put you back as an attendee. See, did I do the match? Okay, good. And then um, I am thrilled to get to bring up some one of my favorite questions, but it also comes from one of our partners. So I, we get to ask it. Uh, which is Julie from CVEX. Julie, are you around? I really liked your questions, Julie. I will ask it if you're not there. Um, so, there. I know, surprise, Hi. Julie. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm doing my best to call on you every time just because it makes me really happy. Julie, do you remember what your question is? I can show it to you, yeah, I can share it with you. Thank you. And um, really you kind of touched on it in your previous answer, but um, like, what are, I guess, are there industries that you see that are coming into um, these virtual experiences um, that, that would kind of be, you wouldn't expect, like you said, something like construction, yes. Um, but I, I thought just kind of as a fun question, um, do you all have ideas, like, is there an industry that you go, oh my gosh, this would be perfect, and they haven't come around yet? <laughs> Um, or, or maybe some edge cases that just might be interesting to us to kind of hear like, whoa, I never would have thought that they would endorse um, virtual experiences, but it worked out really great. So you kind of touched on those, but I find that really, really fascinating. Yeah, it is because, um, you know, the, the, the industries who you would think, well, they wouldn't be into this are actually some of the most enthusiastic. Um, I'd say education. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we hear so much about, you know, we don't want kids playing video games. Yet my, my Generation G tells you, if you really want to get kids involved in an experience, 
So we're about to work on an educational project that's about um, helping kids have good, you know, self-confidence and, totally. and, and, you know, and so we're going to put them in a virtual world and learn things and use the interactive games and that'll be a part of it. But okay, I'm going to confess, I, I have, um, I have an industry that I think could be amazing. It's mega churches. I would love to create a virtual church and we could then have, you know, you could live stream the sermon. So I'm at home and I can't make it to church. You, it helps people who aren't able to get there. But then because we can create additional areas, we could have study groups, right? Where we get a Bible study or choir practice. But again, not like this in the Zoom, not that I'm not loving this, but this doesn't feel like being in a, in a spiritual, you know, beautiful environment. We can put you into that environment. So I actually think really, <laughs> this churches are a really interesting use case. I told her she did that just because my daddy was a Baptist preacher growing up. I was like, you just did that because you know I know that. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's interesting because um, if we, if most of us, I, I love when people go, oh, I'm not a gamer or I'm not into tech, but then we do everything from achievement to sports winning trophies to all forms of things where we're used to having the reward and also having that interactivity. And so why wouldn't I always laugh when people go, oh, well, B2B is different than B2C. And this is a platform and it's built B2B2C. But the biggest thing is we're the same audience. So why wouldn't we want it to be fun? Why in the world would I want to watch a DMV video that is super slow? And yeah, that, why, that would be one I'd like to disrupt. Yeah, I mean, actually, you know, any of us who've ever worked in corporations, every year you have so much mandated training you have to go through. Why not do it in a virtual environment? Why not again use gamification to make it fun? Um, you know, it, it just kind of goes goes on and on. The the interesting use cases of you know take something that brings people together but make it feel richer. Yeah, and, and it's interesting too. Though I will just say that, and then we'll know what the next question. But um, I learned we were the agency of record, not only for Vive but also for Magic Leap for or helping with uh, launch out to developers. What I realized is you just can't blow the ocean. You need to focus mm -hmm. on what the verticals are. And so even though this can be everywhere, we're really focusing on right now, how are we creating a platform and a tool that will help with sales enablement? Because the traveling and stuff, people are not going to want to go on the road like they used to. And so how are we letting each other connect, showcase a product, educate, and still have fun in it and be a, a part of it? And then the other one is the fan experiences. I'm really bullish on that. I think being able to I mean, all, I mean, like I said, growing up in East Texas, we couldn't like always go to the Cowboys or anything. We couldn't afford those tickets. But if you could actually have a platform that you could be a part of it and feel like you're getting to do some of the cool, fun experiences instead of just watching it, then you then the loyalty is even more so there. If there's anyone from the Kansas City Chiefs watching, <laughs> I would be totally ready. She's like, we're doing it for free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> throw it in. Well, and so many of us in Austin really miss our live music venues. I know. Yeah. If you could have immersive a concert where you could go to any concert anywhere in the world and get to feel like you were a part of that. that I know. Be. I keep telling Matt at Black Fret because I love that organization. I love. Yes, we love. I that. love Black Fret. I, I keep going. Let's just do it like two. <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm so in on this. I love Matt Ott and Black Fret and all of that and live music. Okay, awesome, you Julie. So enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you. I, I want to get an. Extra plug, we're super thankful to have Julie and CVEX as our partner. You guys are awesome. We so appreciate you. We so appreciate that you're here all the time and ask such good questions. So I love it. Thank you. I learned so much from you guys. You're, Thank you so much. You, you are fantastic. I was like, Julie's here. It's always I feel, so, I feel very excited. So thank you so much. Okay. Um, okay, Jay, you had he submitted a, a few questions, but I'd like to call Gary Edwards up to ask his question number three. Is he remember he submitted at 7.07 p.m. Gary? He's he's not gonna remember that. I want to give a shout out while he comes on. Uh Mary Garza's here. I saw that because when I put in GAR for Gary, Mary Garza. So some of our team members are here. Uh shout out to Mary Garza. Uh, uh, we love you. And Delaney, who's also here, and uh John Lockman, who's also here. We have a lot of the awesome forum team who's here attending. So we love you guys. They make this organization happen too. So, anyways, Gary Edwards. Hey, how are you? Uh, thank you for all your insight. That was super in intuitive and super, it, that's exactly where the world is going. And thank you for sharing that. My question was, in those environments, and as you walk through the Dell example, um, am I the only person there? Is there interactivity? So as you look at things like Comic-Con and all the fantastic costumes that people do in those events, 
am I a singular figure there or can I see other crazy people dressed up like me and interact with those folks? Um, the, the Dell experience you saw uh, was kind of more of a first person experience to use a gamer term, but um, many of our other worlds, you are there. You are there as your, as your virtual self. You're not an avatar. So you can, to your point, Gary, show off your Comic-Con costume. And we think that's very important. We think, again, when I talked about, you know, that this was the greatest technological advance uh, of people, adoption of people doing virtual, we want to lean into that. So right. if you joined us in another one of our worlds, you and I, whether I'm a, the salesperson and you're my client, we could walk along together and look at things together. So yes, we have lots of examples of that as well. Yeah, what I like to cool. do sometimes is, is we're trying to get people to focus on what it is, the education inside of it, right? And mm -hmm. so I always laugh because people are like, well, why are you putting lounge furniture in a digital world? <laughs> you can't sit down. So uh, why not do something like say, hey, here's the red lounge and the blue lounge. Go over to the red lounge if you want to learn a little bit more about cognitive learning, hey, go over to the blue lounge if you want to learn more about quantum physics. And then you get over there and you click there and you can have your own room and your own experience so that it enhances without taking away. And the same thing about avatars. We do that. We have a form of avatars with Genie, which is an awesome partner of ours. But right now we're finding with our data, people really want to see faces. They want to be able to walk right, around. Right. We end up playing games with our own teams and stuff inside of it. So it's fine. So yes, yeah, so that 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 human connection is definitely a big part of being in an immersive world for us. Fantastic, and I, and I think that's going to be the bridge between this this uh, stepping back from the physical press to flesh thing to this 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 move into digital, right? I think if you have that that ability to still connect with somebody, whether it's physical or digital, is 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 so important. So I love what you guys are doing. It's so cool. Thanks. Thanks, Gary, and stay around because you might get called again. Right. You, know. you, I know. Okay, sorry. I got to be quick on the draw with these things. Okay, moving you to this. And then I'm going to pick, and somebody, we had a lot of people who are both very curious and or also very interested in the South by Southwest Edge. You don't know. A little bit of both. I have both really good questions. Uh, so Drew Harris, Drew, you had some good questions about um, sort of, are you around? Drew, Drew are you around? Oh, perfect. Yes, I am. Um, Awesome. It was um, your most recent question at 658 about uh, the advantages of newbies versus um, experienced players. Would you like to share your question? Sure. Well, as someone who's played a lot of games, you find in the game worlds, it almost stratifies into the experienced play players and the newbies who get mocked, who, you know, in, in fact, that's part of the biggest problem, I think, with gaming is that you come in, you try to have a social environment, but because you don't know what to do, you know, you get mocked and it becomes a negative experience. And so I'm curious if this is an issue in any of your worlds, if you guys have found any notable solutions on how to address that. Yeah, I, well, it's interesting to talk about that, Drew, because I actually, uh, before I started AA Labs, I worked at Riot Games. And I was on the committee that where we were really trying, this was 10 years ago, nine years ago, really focusing on um, how to do like the different ways of building communities because it had become so um, poisonous in some of the spaces. And so being able to have kind of a code of ethics from day one and building that same as honestly for us as inventors and creators, having a code of ethics on what we're doing with our data, I think is really important too. So the product is not, I never want to build this product to create, or we don't want to build this product to create something that divides people it's more to, to, um, to create a better community. And so in that space, we're always looking at how are we, we do fun things inside the world. Like we've got Easter eggs hidden all in that thing. So if you want to not, not use the arrows and you want to use your WD keys, you can do that. Or if you want to, so we have different things in that side as well so that both feel that um, they are getting something. We like to call it our Facebook and our Snapchat audience. Feel for both. And you know, depending on if you're the host of an event, um, you can you can control things. You know you can shut off audio if someone is not being appropriate, right? You can you because these are invited experiences. Um, now people do what people do, just like they do on the internet. We could have people posting not nice chat right now, and we can't control them. But you can you know you can use the 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 mute button if you know things start to go a direction that you're not comfortable with. Jessica is very good at tossing those people out. It's only happened. <laughs> Times, but she's good. 
Well, in other ways are having like the multiple choices. That's another one. You're like, while a live event is going on or say we're going to run, it's always on, but doing the live streams and the community building or different things, you could actually be able to um, control and have it on then and then turn it off whenever it's not constantly being monitored. So there's different ways that you can um, be able to affect it. Or like I said, the multiple choice. So if you want to have like emojis or certain things released inside of a world, or we do photos too, and we can, you know, do a plug in and different photo booths. Um, that are out there taking selfies, creating high fives, all of those can implement in. Well, taking it from a different angle, like in a lot of games, they have like a built-in tutorial, which is actually often not fun, right? Like when you yeah. first try playing a game, you have to go through the tutorial. And I'm curious whether or not you, you guys have to create tutorials for your world or have you yeah. found well, I mean, you know, look, uh, some people like you, who is an ga expert gamer, would hop in and be touring around in no time. But, you know, I, I just, I, Amber's sister is like our number one person we talk about. <laughs> Someday she's going to be like, what? Um, uh, we do. Um, what we're evolving to, because nobody likes to read. I mean, how many of us barely read, you know, allow microphone, allow video, you know, we're, we're just moving along, is we do just little vignettes, just little short video vignettes to tell people, you know, for the best experience, here's what you should do. But again, because this isn't a game and no one's trying to shoot you, um, it's a very <laughs> user-friendly experience. You're basically, you know, walking into something and either audio is auto playing by proximity or you click to play. You saw in our uh, Dell Tech tour, we use hotspots to make navigation. So we've really tried to make this something that's accessible, you know, because our intent is for business and not people who are gonna spend hours learning how to master it. Yeah, and I think one of the things too on that is it's always learning, honestly, like our clients and thankfully our, our great partners and so, as we build these products, it's like what is resonating and what is not. And don't fall in love so much with your Kool-Aid that you won't tweak or change it. But in all fairness, we did at the very beginning have a couple of the engineers create uh, zombies inside of one of the world to play a game. And I'm like, I'm not sure how I'm going to sell that, but okay, you can be a zombie in the world. <laughs> I think it'd be a zombie mode in every experience. <laughs> I know. That was Everybody loves exact it. response. Pretty good. Everybody loves a good zombie mode. Okay, thank you so much, Drew. All right, thank you. All thank you. right, so for the next question, I picked, Z well, the, the name is Z Creative Media, so I look forward to seeing what, who the person is. Yeah, I saw him introduce himself. Okay, uh, multiple questions, but the one I wanna ask first is the, the nerdiest first question he asked uh, about holographic XR conference and such. So Jeff, wanna ask that first question? Yes. Hi. Thank you for holding the space. This is awesome. Um, so, yes, my question was kind of on the lines of, you know, what's going to be that catalyst that y'all feel would kind of launch um, us from like an early adopter phase to more, you know, the early majority for some of these immersive experiences? Yeah, you know, I'm always saying it's that frictionless word. A, how long is it going to take them to get in there? B, like I was that person as a gamer that when we built this, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to walk all the way around and go explore and find Easter eggs. I mean, we even built the first one, Alienware, had a secret room to go in and see the whole entire world backwards. You know, weird things like that. But what you realize is most the audience that we were building to, um, that's why I call it the Snap, Snapchat and Facebook, most of the audience wants to go to the stage. They want to go to the store. Once they're comfortable, then they'll walk around. So that's where the dollhouse and the navigation stuff have been there. And I mean, look, you still like we're working on, you saw that I'm sure the new announcement with Google for web GPU. And a lot of stuff that we've built is in the WebGL space. The WebGL doesn't play friendly all the time with mobile. So then it's like, okay, well then how do we adopt or add on to products that will allow for mass adoption um, and simplicity? Yeah, again, I, we kind of keep saying this, but that's why we did intentionally did not go the VR route because we're not seeing you know, that having broad adoption yet. Um, I, I think the other thing is, and you know, the, the intersection of this generation G of gamers and the you know, after disruption, um, that is really helping us. I have to tell you, the, the, the winds are at our back right now because you have people who are familiar with being in a virtual world and now seeing themselves. Because up till then, if you were a gamer, you saw yourself as a character in the game. You didn't see yourself as yourself, and there were various reasons. We're now bringing 
the you know what we're doing right now, the virtual uh, presence of it into this kind of gaming environment. And I think that's going to really move it along. I think that's when you have you know every uh, you know person at a company suddenly feeling like this is something I can do. This is something I'm already somewhat yeah, familiar yeah. with. Yeah, and I think the last piece on that because I'd seen one of your other questions, but the last piece is also when we were when I was working with Riot Games and helping build out esports the strategist. One of the biggest things that we would do is we would reach across. We would like see what's going on in other gaming companies because water rises in helping the adaption of esports. The same thing I'm seeing with this. What are the other things? Someone mentioned spatial IO, big fan, been in there. Like there, but people are doing it. Wave, Wave is doing amazing stuff. Love out on Rigo and their team over there. And we work closely with them as well because they are focused on the music space and they knock it out of the park, right? So how do we help with the adaptions? And that's also where I think I'm really bullish. I've been a couple of times is what is the standardization that we're going to pick so that it, things can go and jump across the different worlds. Where we are now, where we'll be in five years would be extremely different. Yeah. Absolutely. And then um, kind of speaking to the device world, um, do you feel as if like if Apple were to come out with a, like an AR glasses kind of thing, uh, do you feel like that the whole world would blow up like as far as AR and VR platforms? I, I, I'm a huge fan of AR. I, I've, I've seen, um, I've gotten to be in the room, this company, uh, it's only like, uh, quite a few of different styles of platforms and hardware. And what I love about AR is everybody right now, look, I bet you got a phone somewhere. Pretty close, right? And so how, how much will the adaption be of where we are creating things in an educational way and informative? Like you walk up to someone and go, oh my God, I know I know this person. Who is this? Yeah, you know, that can't just be me. <laughs> um, but I think one of the biggest things is then how are we getting to be a part of the world around us? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the plank. I love, I'm one of those double, like play two people in a VR Thing, but the problem is the adaption isn't isn't there on the hardware. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I mentioned we have a uh, construction client. Um, this is now when it gets really interesting. So imagine that we build this um, construction workspace as a digital world, and as you're walking through, you see some of the tools. You know, a, the drill that goes through concrete. But now you could hold your phone up. Can, you know, connect to, uh, you know, a code within our digital world. And now you're looking at the, the, the drill, maybe really on a work site. So in other words, we're, we're connecting what's happening in the digital world to, to what could be happening in the real world through AR. Yeah. And I think to your point about, you know, will Apple AR blow up the world? It'll, you know, look, you know, Apple is a leading indicator, right? It, it still kind of is the tastemaker for technology people. And then we see things yeah. start to kind of filter down. So yes, clearly, Adoption. you know, that's gonna have a, a big impact. Yeah, and, it's with the machine. and the thing is to go back to what we were talking about, it's like, can other products work in the platforms, right? So what, what's going on right now in some of the Austin companies that are like machine learning with AI and some of the areas, those are amazing. Why wouldn't we wanna be an integrated hub that lets people find those and be able to unlock them? Absolutely, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Jeff, that was a great question. One of the reasons I liked picking it is because I had that same comment about Apple and AR glasses two years ago when we did an in-person event on AR and VR. And in fact, I think Amber was one of the two speakers at that event. Hmm. And my suggestion was that when Apple can figure out how to miniaturize it and make it stylish, I mean, they made us wear these watches. <laughs> they made us wear earpod, or AirPods, and both of them got ridiculed at first, and now everybody has it. And I think they'll fit, my hunch and my stock investment is that they will figure out a way to somehow make glasses that look nerdy at first, but get better and better and everybody decides they have to have them. I, I like what uh, Russell called them, a tastemaker. I, I, I think I think it's, if they figure out how to make AR glasses work, I'm with you. I, I think that begins to change. People's and you can mind. have them in any color, especially white. <laughs> well, and then they'll introduce them in five colors as they're big one year later. Uh, Purple. Yeah, that's right. I always thought, right? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gonna put you as an attendee. I'm going to pick, cause we brought it up and it's a very popular topic of NFTs. So Allison um, asked a question about that. So I thought I would bring her up too. Ooh, there she is. 
She gonna show up. Allison, are you around? There you are. I'm sorry, I had something else. Like, um, are you present? So, sorry. You okay? You're That's not us. We might, we might have something us. else open. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. It's totally sorry. okay. <laughs> this is the digital world. This is what I happens. think. Allison's having another conversation in another window, and that one's. Yeah, sorry. It was with my boyfriend. <laughs> He's watching this with me. Tell uh, your boyfriend he's being heard by a lot of people right now. Oh, no, I already know. <laughs> but I love that. I love that you're watching and collaborating with someone in the same space on the same computer. That's awesome. <laughs> I yeah. love, that brings me so much joy. Okay, thank, thank you. Much. Allison, if you want to share your question, I thought that was a super sweet question and, and relevant. Yeah, I completely forgot what I asked. Um, got deleted. I had it open and it deleted. <laughs> no it no worries. Up. Here, I'm going to put it for you so you can ask it. Otherwise, I'm just going to ask it for you. And then that's not as exciting. We've heard my voice. <laughs> um, give me one second and I will put it in the chat. It's in your chat right now on Zoom. So if you right. look at that, then you can ask it. You can, you can fudge it a little. You can yeah. boot fill off of that. So if you could have one NFT in a digital frame in involving from a client that you would want currently, or maybe someone you want to work with in the future, uh, what would it be? Wait, hold on. Before they answer, mm -hmm. I'm going to predict Russell's going to say Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> right? Boy, you are good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're asking what would the product be? What would the NFT product be? Yes. Uh, well, mine would be easy. It would be like a retro uh, one of the Nike Jordan type shoes or, you know, or give me like the old Prada retro that they did with the mm. Hmm. Okay. What would you do? What would I do? Ooh, good question. Um, is your boyfriend still listening? No, I have muted and deaf. Right. Just check <laughs> it out. Might Just get used answer. to that. If only in the real world, we had the mute button regularly too. We're just like, oh, uh, <laughs> I feel bad about it. Sorry, he's lovely. No, Allison's boyfriend, we love you too. I'll let, I'll make sure to tell him. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. I see that it gets tricky, right? right? When you think really about how, well, if I could have anything permanently yeah. as, as a digital thing, what would it be? Well, it's also one of those things that you want. It goes back to what we talked about is the Wi-Fi, right? Of like our Wi-Fi. Isn't that funny that even our Wi-Fi has become our identity in its own way, right? And I think that's what's fascinating mm -hmm. about NFTs. Not only what it's like what we feel is worth, but we want to, I believe that if we don't, if we're going to use it, not just a stamp collection, then we're going to use it in multiple places. Then it's like Ready Player One. I want the car that I'm driving in my digital world to represent who I am. And I think what's fascinating is in an ideal situation, it would be, I have seven different fanatical spaces that I go into from building a 1966 Bronco to an old arcade game, right? And, but we're multidimensional people yet so many times our social media or things like that may only be one part of us. If we create our own worlds or our own NFTs, they can actually be a, another form of what our identity is in a glance. Yeah. In a glance, I now know 30 things about you based on what the visuals are around you. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's difficult to make that decision is, um, I work for an IOT company too, so it's like, oh gosh, you can do anything with that. Um, but how about like a closet? Maybe immersive closet. That's interesting. I don't know. I used to watch these magic shows where people just like switch like clothes like that. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, so there you awesome. go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, th yeah. Thank you so much, Allison, for being here. We super appreciate it. And for being on a Zoom date at the Austin Forum. Joy, <laughs> joy and love. So thank you so much. I'll put you back as an attendee. I I, I do want to know what Russell's second answer would be. I mean, I guess Patrick Mahomes, but what would your, what would your other answer? Oh, be? Well, you know, she said something that was very interesting um, about uh, she threw in at the end or of a client. And we talked about, we were doing this, uh, we're doing an educational project. And, you know, for me, if we can do something where we're helping, you know, kids again, build confidence or skills, and then there's some sort of NFT that, that marks their achievement, that to me would be very precious. That's good. I like yeah. that. The part of like, yeah, better than a gold star. Better than a gold star, yeah. better than a paper, you know, that says, you know, here you did it. Something I think that's, that's the best be answer I've heard for an NFT yet. I really like that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, Jay, your turn to choose. Even though he pandered to oh, Jessica, Michael. I want to call no. Michael Shearer. Except you, uh, Michael Shearer's not here. I should have told you. 
Oh, I was going to pick him earlier. I know you think he knows because Michael Shear has been to. All right. Well, uh, there's a good techie question. There's a yeah. good techie question here from Brittany Glassroder. So I'd like to have her ask that one if she's here. She says to ask a question on her behalf. See, please ask you on my behalf. Sure. All right. So Brittany wrote. Latency has been the biggest frustration for me in my past year transitioning to digital. How do we make immersive experiences enjoyable and accessible to everyone, including those who don't use devices with high-end graphics cards? A little bit like Russell's question earlier about you know, where you have communities that don't have high-speed internet. Um, I, similar answer, we try to do create uh, for the, to, to as much as we can to the lowest common denominator of technology. But obviously when you're trying to do something immersive, it has certain uh, specs and requirements. That's why we've also developed other solutions. Um, we have been talking a lot about something we call the digital world. We have another um, less uh, intensive solution called double space named after, you know, double A labs, which is again, a virtual experience but is much lighter in terms of memory. And so where you have latency issues, it can be a, another alternative uh, to experience things. Do you have a sensor that measures latency, bandwidth, and client rendering power in any of these environments so that it yeah, can- Yeah, it's fascinating, Jay. We've actually been looking at, um, I was funny, I had a meeting this morning with a company that does that really well. If, um, one queue or on, it will actually measure the latency and say, okay, we're gonna only show five of the content pieces um, based off of that. And it can actually change uh, with the AI. And, and it, that's been around this gentleman had built it like 12 years ago, not with AI, but with like how the, the back end of videos and stuff of how you could use it. And so we're always looking at like things that may have been a little before their time that we can actually use in this space. So imagine at the Dell University or if you see one of our template ones or any of these, instead of it showing 71 things of content, which is a larger, I mean, we've gotten it down to, to under uh, two RAMs or, or such that you need to, to run on that. But imagine if we could say, okay, based off of where your internet or what your computer does, we're only gonna actually give you 15. And if you want some of the others, click this button, we'll change out. And so there's definitely things and the technology is out there. So those are things we're looking at how we plug that in. Awesome. I'm going to ask, and I might have touched on this a little bit, but since Michael Shearer isn't here, but it is a good thing. So what are you, just making sure that we say, what do you think is the next big thing in immersive technologies and how it's going to be applied? You know, it's funny. I had this debate with someone on like, we're in a, you know, the immersive web is the 4.0 and they're like, no IOT is and AI is and machine learning. And it's so fascinating to me because I think of it all as kind of the same. It's the same playground that we're using and each one builds off of each other and tags in. So, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, how do you look at things and see how, um, I, I am fascinated by the AI and machine learning stuff as well. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I think that if immersive experiences through AI can become smarter and anticipative of what you want to do next in that world, it really gets interesting. So, you know, where we are today, you know, where, where um, we built a world and we've created a, a, a curated experience, but if every time you come back, we're learning and, and presenting you more things that you're immediately interested in, the world gets smarter basically every time you come back and interact with it, that feels like a future uh, state that's not that far away either. Yeah, because then it could be so interesting in the education space of how, you know, you're like, oh, I love learning this and these are the different things and then things more in that area could be um, taught. But, but even in sales enablement, let's just say you're a client who's come into a world, we see that you're spending more time looking at a certain type of product or service. Now the world sort of starts to shape around that interest. You know, so you, again, we use the term rabbit hole, but even in, you know, not just in personal passions, but even in business, people want to get deeper into information. And I think it's aggravating, aggravating, that's me on a bad day aggregating lots of things together so that it's a multi-sensory experience. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. Jay, do you wanna ask Roy's question next or you wanna pick somebody? 
I was going to ask Royce, but he's not here. So I know. He's, uh, on, he's on our team too, Royce. Eric oh. Van Hensbergen is here and he's on. How about Eric? Can Eric. You... Oh, I love Eric too. He comes to lots of things. Eric, are you, are you there, Eric? Is this thing on? Can you hear me? Very still. Yes. We yes. Can. Okay, uh, it moved my Zoom like between one of the 20 monitors and I had to find it again. Uh, there we go. So mine, oh, there we go. Mine was a uh, follow-up. Wow, why is that so red? Mine was a follow-up to uh, one of the other questions, which was on hardware capabilities and things like that. Have you looked at things like um, the GPU rendering in the cloud, like Stadia does in, in GeForce, and does that help with anything, or does that just make the latency problems worse? Yeah, so um, my old boss at Disney, um, she actually runs global media at AWS. So when we were building some of these, he's an advisor. So, um, and Jay Williams has a lot of experience on that, uh, and he's an advisor with our company. And so a lot of times we'll bring in those groups uh, that will know wh where things are now and where they're going. So that because we're obviously not just building a platform and a product for right now, we're building it for the long run. And so as we're doing that, where will things be, and when can we roll out other features? So we have looked at um, the cloud. We actually are doing that. We're doing now. We're caching. So as you go into the space, we learned that um, if we cache it immediately as people go in, that actually helps as well. So you don't have all of the um, things running in the background. So we'll do it throughout the world. So remember, the average spend time for some of these spaces. It's about 39 minutes. So we don't want all of that hitting and running because you push this button and you walk to another one, all that. So we'll actually cache it so that it's hitting the cloud and refreshing. But another part, and so this is sort of another side of, of your question is um, when we work with clients and they bring us all their great content, um, you know, it's our job in order to make a great experience that has low latency and you know easy access that we're taking that content and formatting it in a way that can be easily uh, played back out. And so, you know, um, you can imagine when you saw that Dell virtual tech tour, we have a lot of content in there. And so the optimization of that is something we have our team very focused around. Yeah, and that optimization on that as well as companies have like VPNs and different packages built on computers that, you know, are like, what is this in this file? So it's figuring out all the things around that and, and um, being able to optimize for that. So that best product of the world, but if someone can't access it, doesn't do any good, does it? So, we're trying to figure out all of the other things that we have to figure out with firewalls and such. I love that people are actually drinking. Amber and I are in LA, so it's not quite cocktail hour, but I oh, love I love, I love seeing yeah, well, that. <laughs> I don't He's understand. Like, what, today, take a big slug of his drink. Yeah. I don't understand what you just said, Russell. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. I, I'm like, it's five o'clock. Not cocktail hour yet. Yeah. I mean, it's LA, it's 5.50, so it is cocktail it is hour. We're, we're actually cocktail. inhibiting yeah. your cocktail hour is what I'm hearing. I thought the pandemic meant that all hours were cocktail hours. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, I'm going to put you. And Thanks, then Eric. we're going to bring back somebody who we have asked questions. Hold on. Um, now I can't remember which one was a favorite one. Jane, which one was our favorite one? I oh. remember who it was, but now I'm, I'm not remembering. I, I think I know who it was, but I'm not going to say. It's the 614 PM it. question. Okay, thank you for that. That is our code. Okay, perfect. That's what I thought. Um, bringing back. Oh yeah, because it related to the Austin Forum. And <laughs> it, was, it was related to us, so we decided. It was a very well, self-serving question for us, so we picked it for the oh, room. Look at it. You're on mute, Gary. You're on mute, Gary. Is that is that a big glass of water or it could be a big ass gin and tonic? We are gin and tonic. Uh, that's fantastic. That's how we roll here. So uh, um, we were we were going to ask. We had a, we had a very. I'm going to. I know you don't know the questions that I'm looking at, Gary. So it was yeah. the one about hybrid and physical, hybrid physical and digital. If you'll ask that one, and then we have time for you to ask another. But I want to say that that is our winning question of the night uh, for the Austin, for the South by Southwest badge. Right I will I will buy you gin and tonics when I come. Done. <laughs> Sold. All Sold. of us. Um, so the given that we are now hopefully with 2020 in the rear view mirror and all the cancellation of the big trade events and South by Southwest and E3s and everything else that we use. So do you think the go forward is this hybrid model? I mean, I'm, I, 
is it an amplification of an existing so for example south by southwest will be in its form and function will your worlds amplify that for the go forward for people that can't get there uh, Gary, you and know, then just you, expand you, that you took us back to the beginning remember how we started this whole experience the future is digital right which is that physical physical and and digital and absolutely um it, it's going to be about delivering great in-person experiences, but extending them, making them accessible, creating always on. And, and I, I really think this is now going to be just, uh, it, it's going to be the um, cost of entry for mm-hmm. brands who are really connecting with their, their right. audiences. Again, whether it's direct to consumer or B2B, I think we now all have an expectation that you know we should be able to in, experience content and and information whenever or wherever we are. So right. I don't think we're going back. I mean, Good. and that's not a bad Good. thing. It's just I think we have a an evolved uh, awareness of a new a new normal. Well, and I, this product actually the the one that we have, Digital World, was actually created in 2017 from an event and experience that we did, Billing Con. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like the most Twitch Con. We had mm-hmm. Blizzard as a client, and we were creating an event for 900 influencers. And the biggest thing that you want to do is how do you create worlds that people can not just see on their Instagrams and such? So we built right. this whole space in Unreal Engine, and you could drop in and see different content and videos going on live of what right. these influencers were creating. So now uh, where technology is so much farther here in 2021, it's like, can we actually create something that okay, the screens in the walls all changed. And now the right. room has decided. Now you at a live event, go by and see a touch screen. Guys, we've all seen them in Vegas and everywhere else at live events. You click something and enough people click on that choice. It changes what's going on in the digital space. All of the technology is already there to do that right now. And so that's why I'm really like, what are all the things? And this is what we should be asking. All of us should be asking ourselves as creators and as people that love to engage is what is it that we actually love about live events? And what is it that we're actually love about the virtual, right? right? And so what are the two that we can actually amplify for both worlds so that we are actually better because of them, not siloed? Right. I always laugh when people said, oh, you're a gamer. You must be in a basement, not talking. I'm going, are you kidding? I have friends in Germany, Russia right. as a teenager because the world was so much bigger, even though I lived in East Texas because I gained and I got to right. interact. So and, and I think and I think that's right. I think the like an event like South by Southwest is such a thing, right? It's such an event in and of itself. And there was a FOMO for people who couldn't yeah. get there. So actually now you've given the the ability for people in Germany or that just don't have the means or the wherewithal or geographical limitations to actually go, oh yeah, I saw that. I was there. I, yeah. I saw that event. So actually you're 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 making South by Southwest bigger. And for the people that do it virtually or digitally, it's yeah. it's actually the same as being there. So actually, they don't have that FOMO. I was at South by Southwest, and I had a and great we're going to give you a lovely NFT of a badge that lets you sh- say that share that experience. Right. Awesome. Love NFTs. <laughs> so Gary, we we picked that question because it really relates to the Austin Forum going forward as well. We we take our responsibility for hosting these events and people dedicating their time to it very seriously. And so we curated an in-person event where we were constantly tweaking it, often in ways people didn't realize, but trying to make the in-person events better. But the point was always to pull people out from behind their screens and and get them together in person so they'd meet new people outside. Then the pandemic happened and our advisory board met and we talked about Well, that's not really the mission or objectives of the Austin Forum. It's just how we did it. And so we thought, well, if it's not the mission, then being online doesn't hurt the mission. We just have to think of different ways to do it. We've done that. We've really enjoyed that. We're excited to go back, but we're we're excited about it, trying to figure out the right way to host a large-scale presentation and large-scale networking in a hybrid way. And we're not going to get it all right. On June first, we've got a solution. <laughs> we're, going, we're, we're going. We're going to be talking to them. There, are, you know, there will be things that we can't quite figure out about the pre-event network. In fact, the networking may be online networking and in-person networking mm-hmm. at first, while we figure out how to marry those two. 
but I, I commit to you and Jessica and I were, are going to figure out over the remaining months of the year how we embrace everything we did for 14 years before the pandemic and in the year since and how we best marry those. And we'll, we'll tweak and experiment. We'll ask for feedback, et cetera. So you're in, where are you right now? I'm in LA. We hope you will continue to check in and give us feedback and 100%. rate us and tell yeah. us what we got right. Tell us what you missed that was in person. I cannot replicate the whiskey at trifecta at 8 p.m. after the events for the LA folks, but there are most of the parts of it I probably can't. Got gin? That's fine. I just say, <laughs> we just find out that it's free. Gary's yeah. having happy hour. Amber and Russell, you guys have to, you guys, if everybody's in LA, it's all happy hour. So Jessica, I just realized what I could do is like, there is a huge projector in trifecta that they never use, but it works. I checked last week. We could put cameras in there and we could have a hybrid. We could, we'll figure it out. We'll partner with AA Labs about a virtual happy hour, a digital happy hour. Maybe we can uh, figure that out. Drizzly is very easy to do as a QR code inside of a thing with an Uber Eats and boom. Boom, done. done. Uh, Gary, I'm gonna eat, when I email, I just put it in the chat too. Make sure we connect so I can follow up with you Fantastic. about yourself, myself, us. So you have a reason Thank to Thank you so much, awesome guys. Visit. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, everybody. You know, it's eight o'clock and we still have 40 people here who are still listening. We had still had a, we had a lot of really great questions tonight. Um, we have a lot of people who are who connecting for the first time, a really like national and international group. So yeah, thank we, you everybody who joined. We hit a hundred at one point and we had probably 20 international people on. So that was really impressive. That's good. Wow. Yeah, that. that's fantastic, fantastic. So Jay, any final words? Nope. Thanks, everybody. We will see you all on June 1st. We'll see some of you in person, some of you online, but we'll see all of you then. Look forward to it. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for including Thank us. you very much, Amber and Russell. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Bye.